well. We meet again on Madam Shamsia's biology video. And today's video is on chapter 2, form 5, KSSM, that is on leaf structure and function. And in this video, we are going to focus on subtopic 2.2, main organ for gases exchange. Now we are going to see why is it necessary to have a gases exchange in the leaf. First, it is for the respiration process. Second, it is for photosynthesis. Where does it occur? It occurs at the stoma of a leaf. Okay, the picture shows the stoma of a leaf. Right, stoma is the opening here, okay, which is guarded by one pair of gut cells. So stoma are pores on the lower epidermis of the leaf for most of the of the leaf, especially for the terrestrial plant, okay, which is guarded by a pair of gut cells. So this is the gut cell just now. Okay. Gut cells contain chloroplasts. So gut cells are able to carry out photosynthesis. This animation show the process that occur at the stoma. So this is this opening is a stoma. Okay, remember guarded by gut cells. Alright, so just now I tell you that the function of the uh, stoma is for gases exchange. So you can see, okay, the gas of carbon dioxide enter the stoma. That is of course for the photosynthesis process. As for the respiration process, actually, oxygen gas can also enter through the stoma. So actually, the carbon dioxide and oxygen can enter or come out from the stoma here. Okay, from the video, we can also see that H2O, that is the water, can also enter and diffuse out through the stoma of a leaf. The mechanism of stomata opening and closing depends on the condition of the gut cell, whether the gut cell turgid or flaccid. And one determines whether the gut cell turgid or flaccid depending on two conditions. The first one depending on the potassium ion uptake by the gut cell and the second one depending on the sucrose concentration in the cell of the gut cell. So we are going to look at one by one. The first one is the uptake of potassium ion by the gut cell. The accumulation or elimination of the potassium ion in the gut cell will change the solute potential. When there is a change in the solute potential, then it will either increase or decrease the water potential in the gut cell. Water is then either diffused in or diffused out from the gut cell via osmosis. Whether the gut cell become turgid, meaning the water diffused into the gut cell, or the gut cell become flaccid, meaning the water diffused out from the gut cell, it depends on the uptake of potassium ion by the gut cell. Now, the second factor to determine whether the gut cell will be flaccid or turgid is on the sucrose concentration in the gut cell set. During daytime or when there is a presence of light, photosynthesis will occur. Remember, gut cells have chloroplasts. So, photosynthesis will occur in the chloroplast and it will produce dissolved sugar, that is sucrose. During the night time or in the absence of the light, sugar in the gut cell will be converted into starch. Now we are going to see how the uptake of potassium ion by the gut cell will cause the opening of the stoma. Okay, first, if the potassium ion enter the gut cell, the solute potential in the gut cell will increase. The water potential will decrease. When the water potential decreases, the water molecule from the epidermal cell 
okay, that is next to the gut cell will diffuse into the gut cell by osmosis. Okay, when the water diffuses into the gut cell, the gut cell will become turgid. Okay, you can see potassium. Okay, enter. Okay, so the water will also enter at the same time. Why? Because water potential will decrease when there are a lot of potassium ion in the gut cell. So when the water enter the gut cell, the gut cell become turgid and the gut cell curve. Okay, the gut cell curve upward. That is why the stoma open. Now we will see how sucrose concentration will cause the stoma to open. Okay, in the presence of light or during daytime, photosynthesis will occur and the product is of course sucrose. So the sucrose, the concentration of sucrose in the gut cell will be high during daytime. When the sucrose concentration high, water potential will decrease. So water potential in the gut cell will decrease. When water potential decrease, there is a tendency of the water molecules from the adjacent cell, that is the epidermis cell, the water from the epidermis cell will diffuse into the gut cell by osmosis. Okay, then the gut cell will become turgid. Okay, when the gut cell become turgid, it will curve outward. So again, the stoma will open. Okay, now we look at the questions that is related to the topic. Question one. What is the difference between the gases exchanged in plants during respiration and photosynthesis? Yes, of course, during respiration, the gas that diffuses into the leaf is oxygen and the gas that is released is carbon dioxide. While in photosynthesis, the gas that diffuses into the leaf is carbon dioxide while the gas that is uh, diffused out from the leaf is oxygen. Question 2. Water can also diffuse in and out through stomata as you have seen in the animation just now depending on the surrounding humidity. What do you think happened to the stoma if the surrounding humidity is low, meaning less water vapor outside. Justify your answer. Okay, when the humidity is low, meaning it is dry, okay, the stoma will close. Why? This is to prevent excess water loss from the plant to the surrounding. That's all for today's lesson. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.